Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to the podcast. This is Big Reptile Talk, the podcast where I bring reptile keepers and not just reptile keepers. If you are an animal keeper, I don't care what you keep, whether it's snakes, ants, elephants. I don't care what you keep. If you love animals, there's a good chance I'm going to reach out to you and get you on my platform. I'm going to talk. I'm going to chat and see what you got going on. Um, Today's going to be a a super, super dope podcast. I think it's very much needed. But before we get into that, much love to the early birds in the chat. I see you. Um, Boy, man, I see you. Love you for showing up. Big Tank Hank, I love you. Shout out to Prize Critters. Um, Before we start the podcast, of course, we got to show love to the people that show love to us. Um, So much love to the channel sponsors. Man. Paul from Large Marge Morris. If you know Paul, he's a good guy. He just won 15 minutes of lane. So shout out to him. Shout out to Chris Eaton. Shout out to my brother over uh, at Heathland Hatchery, man. I appreciate you for supporting the podcast. He's producing some heat. Y'all make sure y'all check out his Instagram, Morph Market. Hit him up everywhere. Get his name. Make sure you tell him Derek sent you. And last but not least, Sloan Reptiles. Producing amazing, amazing quality snakes. Y'all make sure y'all hit them up. Check them out. Tell them they're essential. Um, like I said, I mean, today is going to be a super, super dope podcast. Uh, before we jump into that, let's also talk about last night. Last night was super epic. We had Billy from Mutation Creation on the podcast. Super, super dope guy. Um, and we gave away a year membership to his Patreon. Actually, he did. I was going to give away a membership to his Patreon. He was like, you don't have to do that. I'll do it. And he gave away a top-tier membership of his Patreon. So, much love, Billy. Last night was just super, super epic. If you didn't check it out, make sure you go check it out. Now, today, um, if you know, you know. Me and this gentleman, we have a lot of history um, for the last couple of years, man. The Evil Morph God. Um, This is going to be an epic, epic podcast. So, right now, go get whatever you need to drink, eat, sit back, chill, and relax. This is going to be one you don't want to miss. When we when we return, we will have the evil morph guy alive. Mr. Kevin from New England Reptiles. How are you doing today, sir? How are you? I just want to make sure I'm hearing you well because it kind of goes in and out a little bit. So um, I don't know if that's going to be a persistent problem, but uh, I'll try to get through it. I'm going to take my head. Let me take my headphone out. Let me take my headphone out. Let me take my headphone out. It looks like, look like that better. Can you hear me now? I think that might Is that be- better? Uh, it, it, <laughs> okay okay i'm glad that's better man super, super excited to have you here man i know you had a busy day tours at new england reptiles the day man how did that go uh it, it was busy we um we we've been you know since covid we used to do a lot of tours because my facility is open for the public and we try to educate people you know trying to get people like hands-on experiences touching animals because you, you and I both know we want people to love these animals like we do. And at the very least, we want people to interact and touch them. So I think it's very, very important for us to have tours, let them meet these animals. We can educate them about that and maybe change their perception of these animals. Certainly in this climate of 
laws and legislation where they're trying to constantly grind on us and shut us down. I'm trying to, you know, always get more support for our pets. Now, 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 Kevin, you know, for the people that don't know you, man, you got, you have so many hobbies, whether it's playing the guitar, whether it's animals, but let's touch on animals specifically. Like, like why animals? Um, well, I think it has to do, um, like when I was a child, I tended to be a bit of a loner. I'm still a, a loner. And, um, I had, I had some like brothers that used to like beat me up and stuff like that. So. I used to kind of go and hide in the woods and I'd play with bugs and um, I would just kind of lose myself in these, these other things. And the bugs were interesting to me because if I made myself known, I would, my brothers would catch me and, and do things to me. So I started having a connection with bugs and then I started getting into snakes. I certainly was keeping a lot of fish, but I think when it comes all down to it is, we want to lose ourselves in something else as we try to, you know, quiet our minds and find solace and find something to take away and distract. And I've continued that, you know, from then to now. When life is, gets hard, you can lose yourself in your animals. And sometimes it's 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 good to just stop worrying about what you're thinking and start worrying about like some other thing, try to help it, try to understand it. And I think it's just continued, you know, that way for me, because I find a lot of mystery in these animals. Right, right, right. Now I've been doing my research and like I said, you're one of the big dogs in the game. You've introduced so many more. So a lot of people probably didn't even know that. Like when it comes to like ball pythons, uh, I was, I was reading a story where, Oh shit. His internet is it my internet or is the internet his internet? Come back in, kid. This airplane mode. Okay, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. He's gonna come back. It's going to be a heavy, heavy podcast because we're going to touch on a lot of stuff today, you guys. So don't go nowhere. Derek. Derek. Yeah, that's, I'm that's sorry. Derek. You're um, back. I can hear you. I had to go. My, I had to put myself in airplane mode. My phone is, people are calling me. So I had to, I had to get out of that. So I'm sorry about that. I apologize. <laughs> Um, now I gotta, I gotta talk about this. Cause what, what, what I'm really interested with is when it comes to ball pythons, I love that you introduced all these more, but we got to talk about, yes. um, the, the, you, is it true? You, you introduced the, the pastel first. It was called like the jungle pastel yeah. and then the jungle fell off. You introduced the pastel, right? Yes. And you did that with who was like a guy from Florida. What was his name? The dude that he, I think he's missing an arm now. God bless him. Uh, so this is Greg Graziani. Greg's wonderful. And the first time, I, yes. the first time I bred my pastel, I didn't make any pastels. And then I raised up um, two of the daughters and I bred the daughters back to the male. And then that clutch, there was pastels in there. And I was at the show down in uh, Daytona, I think it was at that time, or Orlando, excuse me, Orlando. And he had similar pastels on his table and I'm looking at them and I started talking to him and he had uh, shown that they were, uh, they were dominant or incomplete dominant because he bred his animal to a normal or whatever and made them first generation. So the first time I did it, I just missed. And then I did it again, thinking it was recessive, you know? And I I had um, what we called like the lemon pastel. So, but I had named it Pastel Jungle. And, you know, I ended up doing a whole bunch of different more. Yes. Now, now I want to ask this, because you will know for introducing the spider gene too, right? Yes. Now, my question to you is when you introduced it, 
how did it feel you introducing this more and then seeing all the controversy around it? Well, when I first made it, so I think I made it around 1999, somewhere in that area. There, I made, hey. I, I made three of them the first time. So proved that it was genetic, proved that it was uh, essentially, you know, in this case, it was dominant. Um, but there was no controversy. There was like, oh, my God, look at these, look at these crazy things. There was, you know, nothing about, you know, a wobble or anything like that. Uh, and then I bred it to a pastel jungle. And the first time I bred it to a pastel jungle, I didn't make the double. The double had nobody had ever made a python double ever right and pretty much nobody had really made any snake doubles except for like snow corns and a couple things like that but there was like no python or boa double and so the first time i whiffed and then the second time i did it and i made bumblebees and that was like a huge huge thing because bumblebees were so fantastic looking compared to you know, the wild, the wild type ball python, still no controversy. The controversy didn't come until a fair bit later because I was producing spiders and I was selling them because very, very powerful. You know, I started making super pastels and bumblebees and killer bees and honeybees and albino spiders and all that. So there was a lot of interest. It was a very, very powerful gene to combine. And there was really the wobble was just kind of like a cute thing, you know, and it, you know, you weren't getting these corkscrew animals at all. And I even bred, I was breeding spider to spider too. And, you know, you get, you might get an animal that, you know, it's kind of off center or if it gets excited, it might do something, but the controversy came way later until we started you know um there were so many different morphs being introduced you know we start refining ourselves and being maybe more you know just dis discreet uh or elitist or whatever then um like people would start talking about like uh you know the loopiness of a spider sometimes or whatever and then it just kind of progressed from there Right, right, right. I got kind of pissed when I seen when I seen old go go herping talking about it. I was like, so, "You're not gonna take nothing away from the spider gene." Kevin is a legend. That's a really, I think that's a really, really bad um, example because you're talking about somebody who really doesn't know much about ball ball pythons, ball python genetics, right? And he's taking an animal that was a rescue animal, right? You could have taken that animal and sprayed it with raid. I I never seen spider ball pythons you lay them upside down and it stays upside down but he used that right and to me that was like you know who knows what that animal had had gone through but that was such an aberrancy compared to what i see and i breed um and he just put that out there and he it was really in my opinion it was a huge disservice now, mind you, like at the time, right. breeding spider balls for any kind of money was like inconsequential. It was it was nil. I just love the spider gene, but he ground on that pretty hard. But it was very um, biased, and he. I think it just it led people to think that I all agree. these snakes are upside down. And I, I have wonderful spider, spiders and spider combos that I love. And they're fantastic. They're very, very healthy. And they live a long time. Right. I love it. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. Now, I got to give you a hot seat question. It's not really a, a question. It's more of a statement. Um, I love Jeremy. And I feel like you need to get Jeremy back. So I got an idea. I feel like Jeremy will come back. If you offer him one million dollars and you put a record break. Well, I, I love Jeremy too in a very gay way. No, I, I love Jeremy. Jeremy's 
wonderful. Um, he's my buddy. We're very, very close. And, you know, uh, he is a very well-trained professional musician. I'm also a musician. Uh, I make up all the stuff that I do. So he went to schooling and he's been a music teacher. And now he's actually, he's working um, partly for U.S. Art. So most important is... Right. Very, he knows I've done, you know, I've, I've had a long passion for U.S. Arc and he's picked up on a lot of that and he's brought himself into U.S. Arc. And that is paramount, in my opinion, because Jeremy is um, current, you know, and a lot of times with the things in U.S. Arc, excluding like Phil Goss, but there are aspects of U.S. Arc that are archaic and are not of the present day and age, um, certainly regarding social media trends. And U.S. Arc has to be incredibly, um, you know, plain oatmeal. And, you know, there can't be a lot of controversy. So there needs to be other people brought into the fold that have connections, such as Jeremy, that has a very good nice reputation jeremy's well spoken uh he has charm and charisma he's highly intelligent and he's a bonus and a plus that us art desperately needs and uh i'm very happy with what jeremy's doing right now well i'm telling you how you get him back is you you need to put a recording studio at, at nerd and he I, well, I would be recording there too. It's really funny when Jeremy and I play music together, he plays, you know, jazz and I'm like a shred metal head. So <laughs> we, 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 we meld very good together, you know, musically and stuff like that. So I of course would love that. I love that. I love that. Now, man, you know, you, you have built, you know, such an, an incredible company. Like I said, you, you have so many accomplishments that nobody can take from you, whether it's being a musician, whether it's, you know, breeding ball pythons. And like I said, you built Nerd, which is such an incredible company. And my question to you is like, when you were building this company, did you have any doubts? Like, okay, I might not be able to do this. Yeah. God, I came from electronics and computers. I used to work in a research and development lab as a senior electronic technician. I, I'm, um, I very much have a very creative mind and I, I'm very articulate with like discrete things that I like to do. I like puzzles. I like real challenges. And ultimately, I just had a hard time in the corporate world, not be for, for performing my job. It was actually being around some other people that were literally corporate robots. And um, there was a couple of people working where I worked that I I couldn't stand and we did not get along. So I ended up just, I quit and I was keeping animals and I decided I was just going to go try to start a business, you know, New England reptile. I started out as like any reptiles, like N E reptile, like all, you know, I keep any reptile, I deal any reptile, whatever the hell it was. And then I just, well, if I had a D New England reptile distributors, That'd be kind of like, you know, tongue in cheek. I felt a little stupid about it, but yeah, very much doubted pretty much everything because I didn't know how to run a business. I didn't understand all that different stuff. But the one thing was I was so wholeheartedly into these animals and they just dictated so much of my life. I wanted to see if I could, you know, flesh out a niche to keep and breed these animals. And, you know, this is in 94, you know, so I was, I came from being a colubrid breeder. So I was breeding pine snakes and mountain kings, and I bred some hog island boas and some boa constrictors and Burmese pythons. And I really wasn't accomplished at ball pythons. I had a mild interest in ball pythons initially, and it was just so common and everybody else looked past it. But ultimately, yeah, I had I had a lot of reservations and I had a lot of worries and I got myself in really, really deep. And the only thing without having a lot of financial backing, which I didn't, 
I had endless energy and willing to work and work and work. And I built everything from being able to breed reptiles, taking those offspring, selling some of those offspring and taking that money and putting it right back into the animals. And then I would build caging. I'm very, you know, handy when it comes to that. And the only way I kind of made it was just by my willingness to uh, work far beyond what maybe normal people were willing to do. I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Now, just for shits and giggles, a hot hot seat question, man. Shout, shout out to Jay Brewer, man. You know he's got his TV show on Roku. He's doing his thing. But I feel like if Nerd, Nerd should have their own TV show, man. So if, if Nerd had a TV show, what would the name of it be? Well, I've already been groomed for all this stuff. I've already gone some stuff through with Animal Planet several years ago. I didn't like it. Uh, they're calling it Snakeheads, Snake King, um, all sorts of different things. Um, I used to be, I used to work with Icon Films, which does River Monsters, and they were going to potentially do a show with me called Slither Monsters. And I'd have to go remote, and we would track down stories about creepy crawly big giant snakes whatever and then try to flesh out where the reality is and then kind of expand on that idea and do education because obviously i love to educate people but um recently i've touched back right. with a guy named david roma and david roma is the guy that started miami inc and la inc and all that so david is uh film wow yeah he filmed uh a sizzle we call a sizzle or teaser tape and a while ago he started contacting me again and at first uh, he was calling me and i didn't want to talk to him even though i like david i thought he was following he was kind of calling me for the stupid you know this like snake king or reptile king you know like tiger king but they were gonna do like i i thought <laughs> i thought he was calling me for that and i'm like i want nothing nothing to do with that i don't want to be any part of that so eventually i returned his call and it turns out he wasn't doing any of that he actually says look people see your sizzle tape i keep getting an interest and attention and he goes maybe now is the time and there's tons of drama at nerd because you know it's a struggle to keep this going I have a lot of animals. I have a lot of employees. I have 26 employees, roughly. There's all sorts of personalities. And it's very challenging. It would be very different from Jay's because Jay is, um, I think Jay's is like real straight ahead. And maybe we're a little bit weirder. And so it wouldn't, I don't think we'd be rehashing the content that Jay's doing. It would just be, you know, how I think, how I do socialization, like maybe throw in some problems and then maybe some solutions. And then I would go remote and maybe go to other countries or whatever. So we're right now um, talking about this. Right, right. You need a show, man. You need a show because you're absolutely crushing it. Uh, we'll come back to some of these stories, but let's get, let's go ahead and start getting into the, the meat and Meat, meat of the uh, the podcast. So I want to start off with YouTube. So let's start at YouTube, man. Like, how does it feel? You know, I've been following you for years. I watched you come on to YouTube, <clears throat> and I watched you grow. You grow from the sixty thousand. I watched Donnie come and he gets you to fly, and now you're at eight hundred and twenty seven thousand followers. So my question to you was like, like, how does that feel having almost a million people subscribe to your YouTube? Well, so. I, I'm not a giant fan of social media. I mean, I, I do it, and I'm sometimes an unwilling participant. I have my ups and downs, and I'm sure you can testify or attest to such a thing. But, you know, it's it's a grind, and you're trying to figure out what can I put out there that is unique to myself, my mindset. <clears throat> and you can put out shocking shocking uh you know like clickbait stuff and you might get a lot of sub subs and you might get a lot of attention but i don't know if that's necessarily something you can keep long term so i've kind of just like settled back to 
Now I want to talk about the things that I, I think I know about, which is, you know, ideas of these animals. And I want to teach people. I really like to make people like learn how to socialize and interact with their animals so they can have better things. But it's, it's nice. I would like to have a million subs and, you know, you, I, I think I just, I think the number is just like a goal. Um, but I really like a lot of my audience. There's so many, so many nice people. And Derek, you must realize this. You have people in your audience that you're like such, like they're, they're meshed with you. They like, they like, they're having a bad day and then they hear you talking or you're talking about something and it helps them escape what they're dealing with. And, you know, we all need to escape. I need to escape a lot, too. I escape within my animals and all that. And I think we all have that problem. But it, it's a grind. And, you know, it's also a burden. Because I don't know if you can keep up with your social media, like the messages. I can't do it. I don't even try to do it. It's it's too much. I love it. I love it. Well, you're killing it over there, man. But, you know, you, you say you're not a, a, a social media person, but you got that plaque, man. So where'd you put that YouTube plaque at? I don't even know where it is. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably, it's probably what? all, it's probably, it, it, you know, I think, God, I think we had one for like 100,000. And then I think, what's the next one? I don't even know. I don't pay attention to that stuff. I really don't. I think the next one is a million. Okay, well then I need to get to a million. That's what I'm grinding for that plaque, man. Yeah, I, I took. The I think that I think that next one is that plaque, man. And like I said, shout out, to amazing. You know, you are the mastermind behind it, but I think Donnie's editing is just top tier. Yes. So shout out to Donnie, man. I think that he is amazing at what he does, and he's a weapon. And you, you stumbled when you got him. You stumbled across the gold mine. He, he, he. He he knows what he's doing. So shout out to Donnie. Um, now we gotta talk about it because this this happened a couple years ago, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you that I'm gonna be, and I'm gonna be open and I'm gonna be honest because this is part of the podcast. You know, I met you. We did a podcast. Some stuff happened that you you know you was too fond of, and I was stubborn. I was stubborn. I was, I mean I was stubborn, Kevin. I I'm not even gonna lie. I think that. views and i didn't understand that all views ain't good views you know but i think <laughs> yes learning it it takes time it, it takes time it's not something that you learn overnight over a day and people could tell you but you have to learn it you know what i'm saying but we're gonna get into that so anyways you and donnie dropped these master masterfully edited videos broke my heart kevin i ain't gonna lie I, i'm gonna be honest with you i cried Cause I looked, I looked up to you that much. I was like, "This dude broke my heart." But I feel like you, you were doing it. It was like tough. I, I got to give Derek some 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 tough love. So I appreciate you for that. I do. I definitely appreciate you for that. It, because it was because it, it it put it, me in a place where I had to sit here and I had to think about it. Is Kevin right? You know, is it? You know, I'm on YouTube to have fun. Is it worth my videos getting reported? Because I'm oh, let me tell you this too, Kevin. You have a loyal following. Do you realize after y'all dropped those two videos about me, anytime I put out a video, they were mass reports. Your following does not play. <laughs> I said, I said, Kevin's following is loyal. Yeah. I couldn't put out a video. They were mass reported. I one reason why I stopped. And I think that might have made Donnie mad, but there there wasn't just one reason. There was multiple reasons, you know. And I and I'm gonna go through them. When I got, I stopped because I don't want to be damaging to the hobby. Yes, I don't want to, you know, make reptiles look like in a bad way. And I don't. I came onto YouTube wanted to get views, but I never wanted to be. Hey, that's the live feeding guy. You know what I mean? Yep. I never wanted to be looked at as the lot, the guy that kills rats. That that makes me feel bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But but I want to show you something. Sure. 
Can you can you agree? Can you agree that that would be addicting if you put out one video and it got nine million views? I I understand it, and and obviously I address. Can that. you can you agree that that'd be addicting? It, it would be a what? Could you agree that that would be addicting? Yeah. Being yeah. wanting to be a content creator and you put out a negative video, but it brings in nine million views. Yeah. It's like a drug. Yes. I I understand it um, for sure. And I don't want to be insensitive to that. Um, I guess it comes down to you're, you're in my experience. The first time I met you, I went on and I had a, a great podcast or whatever we call these things. I liked you. We were laughing and, and you were, you're just, you're very, um, you're very agreeable. You're very complimentary, and and all that, and and it was very nice. It was it was effortless. I didn't know that you did live feed videos, and we never talked about that. So I just I didn't know anything about you, and a lot of right. times I don't do podcasts just because I'm not. I don't answer my DMs. I don't. A lot of times people just can't get a hold of me, and I just you know how hard I am. So you got a hold of me because of Robin Marklin. Yes. You know, so Robin just said, hey, I got this guy. Can you just, can you do this thing that he's, you know, it would just be really, you know, make him happy. I'm like, yes, let's do it. Let's get it over with. So I did the podcast. I waited a couple of weeks. I just went and checked to see if I brought you more than three listeners, you know, and, and I, I saw these videos. I saw these videos and they're like, live feed videos and it's like eyes bulging out of a you know a, a mouse's face or whatever and i was like wow because i i hate that and um so I, right. I was taken aback and i talked to you and i said you know we had like a 45 minute call and we went over it and i said look i go it's i think it's harmful for our hobby it makes people think the reason why we keep these animals is because we want to watch little rodents and little animals die. And that is the absolute opposite of the reason why I want to keep any of these animals. But I don't want us to be cast in a light to the general public that really doesn't even like reptiles or snakes and give them more fuel to dislike us, to disagree with our hobby. So I was trying to tell you, Hey, Derek, this is, I think it's really damaging. And your, your, you know, response was like, well, then how am I going to get people? I'm stubborn. Watch? Right. And I understood that. You're right. You're like, okay, I'm new to this. I want to, you know, put this stuff out there. And, and that was certainly an argument that I was not unsensitive to, but I was just like, but dude, it's really going to hurt our hobby. And most important thing to me is I am just a hobbyist. My, my heart is in the hobbyist community. I want to think like a hobbyist. I want to represent hobbyists. I want to help hobbyists. So I, myself included, I don't want to do things that would embarrass us and be damaging for a hobby. So even sometimes I have to rethink maybe my, you know, what I'm thinking or presentation or whatever. And I just kind of want to worry about the welfare. I also want to think like, what would US ARC say? Right. You know, I, I work with US ARC and I don't want to alienate US ARC. So if if I did a couple bad things, US ARC would be like, Kevin, we can't do things with you because you're you're gonna be, you know, um, a negative in in our, you know, uh, esteemed groups of people that we utilize. So I'd rather always be that have that expertise and be very motivated and very good at counting or countering U.S. Fish and Wildlife arguments or state, you know, legislator arguments because I, I like to fight. I'm a fighter. So you and I discussed this and you, you listened to me. You were great. We like our conversation. There was, wasn't animosity because I like, I like Derek. It was, I just don't, I don't like these things that you're doing. You have like 300 of these videos. I was like mortified. I'm like, oh my God, Derek, don't do this. And I, 
I thought I was able to explain myself to give you pause. And I did give you pause. And you said that you would think about it. And we kind of, everything kind of got hung out to dry from there. So I, uh, I went and just cleaved my, um, <laughs> my support, you know, cause that you pretty much gave me your answer. Your answer was, Hey, I need the views and I need to be, you know, recognized and live feed videos gets me. I know I was addicted. Yeah. I understand. I was addicted. Yep. And, and, you know, it, and like I said, once I stopped and I realized, you know, I, I want to be a YouTuber. And don't get me wrong, like, I want, I don't care what anybody else is doing. Just like I don't care what you do with your channel. I don't care what anybody else is doing. We're not talking about everybody else. We're talking to me when it. My dream was to be, you know, Tyler Nolan or Shameless Wildlife. Yep. I wanted to, you know, make video, make videos of showing my collection. And then when I sat there and I thought about it, I was like, I'm making these videos. These people, these people are gravitating good. And I'll show you another one. Uh, I was like, these people are gravitating. Look at this: eight, nine million views, one million views, one million views, nine hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand. It was very addicting, and I, said, these people are gravitating toward these live feeding view videos, but they're not watching anything else. So it's defeating the purpose, and it's hurting my channel because it's like, it's like, yes, you can have fifty thousand subscribers. You want put out a video saying let me tell you what you know let me tell you what i think about all python they're not gonna watch that shit right because you're not because you're not killing the mouse agreed so it almost it almost it's just it's just so many reasons like i said i you know it it, it deterred from my dream um i didn't want to hurt the reptile hobby and like i said I just wanted to get you here to where we could kind of talk about it. Because like I said, it's been over a year. And I wanted to get your opinion on it and say that, you know, let you know that I was I was addicted. Nine million viewers is a lot, Kevin. And and I am I understand that, Derek. And I and I, I'm not even like, you know, like I said, I like, you know, you and I can easily have a, a great conversation, even if we have um, different opinions on something. But I think the good thing is when it's all said and done, you reflected on this through however many, you know, people you had to deal with, but eventually you probably realized that live feed videos paints the reptile hobby, not in a great light. And there's nothing that people can walk away from those videos that is, pro reptile keeping and that's complementary to what we do you know it's uh and it it is it's it supplies fodder for the people that hate us and it makes us i i am not a sadist i don't like to hurt animals i don't want to watch animals being hurt and and i'm so empathetic like mice and rats i love mice and rats okay i like i'm just i i don't it's it's the part of my hobby that i can't stand but you know you go into a grocery store right a grocery store is literally the house of suffering for animals because everywhere you're looking right. that's all stuff that came from animals and those animals were all rendered in horrific fashions and I mean, if you want to be realistic, you know, that's all. So <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm a realist and I understand things. And the most important thing is that you have been able to reflect and, and you, you know, I think you're, you, you get it, you understand it. And when I talked to you a while ago, you said, you know, look, I've, I don't want to do that anymore. And now I'm, you know, you've kind of found your place and your, you know, your flourishing and, and all that on your, your online and you're, you're doing your, uh, your podcasts and, and, and such without having to do live feed videos. And I absolutely love that. And I'm very thankful. I love it. I, I, can I tell you something too? I, I had a good talk to a Cusco and one yes. of the, one of the, my favorite reasons that I like Brian Cusco, and this isn't a di disrespect to you. One of my favorite things that I love about Brian Cusco is 
he's growing his platform without being controversial. Yes. And he 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 gives you something without without being, you know what I'm saying? I, that's what I love about him. I don't know. I love about him. But I want to show you some of these comments too real quick. Um cuz I like them. Uh hold on. Da, 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 da. Creative Reptiles. I'm so happy to see y'all talking reconcile. Great job. De Boa man, Derek, I'm happy that you and Kevin are And we're talking is good. But anyway, my next question is, so how do I, because I, you're one of the people in the hobby I look up to. So how do I reconcile me and you, me and your relationship? It, this, this is, this is, is doing, this is doing just that. We can, you know, clean, clean this up. I, you know, I don't, obviously, Derek, there's certain people I dislike. Okay. And if somebody is on the end right. of me. I never had that thing for you. Um, there are other people that are far more deserving and I will go after them because I think they hurt our hobby and they're bad. I don't think there, there was like, you know, uh, let's, let's just be very matter of fact. When you and Chandler were doing some stuff, it's, I don't even, I don't even really care. I, like when you guys are like ragging on me, I don't care. Yep. It's I'm a I'm a pretty, you know, tough soul. I can endure a lot. I might react immediately, but you know, T Chandler and I have uh, been at it before. But I ultimately think that Chandler and I will probably be friends. And um I think that's just probably my Of course. I think if y'all get in a room, eventually y'all will be. What say that again? I said of course. I think that you both are animal lovers. Y'all will Become friends because y'all yeah, have the same kind of. Belief. It's either. But fight. anyways, I, like I said, I wanted to get you here and just talk about some of that stuff. And, and, and now let's keep going because I want to. I got some more questions. Sure. You got nerd. One of the biggest things in the game right now. What was your most memorable nerd visit? My most memorable nerd visit. Yeah. You're, okay, your phone. Well, somebody stopped and they visited you. Who who was like your most memorable nerd visit? Um, I've I've dealt with Slash. Um, I'm buddies with Carrie King from Slayer, Stephen Regal. You know the Commissioner WWE or now it's whatever the hell it's called. Uh, uh you know who did I really, who did I really enjoy? Um. You know, I'm not starstruck, I suppose. And I think most important is people that I really, really, um, I feel like a uh, connection with. Uh, and that would be like Brian Barczak and Dingo and people that are not, and that I'm just on the same level. I'm like even Savannah Bowen. I love Savannah because her and I are very, very, we, we just, we very, uh, we connect very, very well. And we love to talk about little nerdy reptile things. So I think I'm more enamored, Derek, with people that I have more uh, common uh, views with or understandings of these animals. Because it's generally always about animals. I mean, Carrie King, Slayer. I love that. Carrie's been in my place tons of times and all that. And obviously I call, I just call him metal God, but when it comes down to it, my relationship with like, like Carrie, he's just, he's my friend. He's just like a good, smart guy that I have a lot of respect for. I love. Yes. Everybody's saying, didn't he do stuff with Steve? Yes. Didn't he do stuff with Steve? Bad. Yeah, Kevin, yep, yeah. Didn't okay. Kevin work with Steve? Yes. Yes. So, but, yeah. And look I, at this. I saw Kevin on a talk show handling animals with Steve. Yes. Yeah. So, Steve Irwin. So, I would go out and provide animals for Steve. And what was really wonderful about Steve was what you saw is what you got. I didn't get this giant ego. We would chat. Um, uh, he just, he was very, very natural, very much genuinely loves the animals. 
I hung out with Nicolas Cage. Nicola, Nicolas Cage loves reptiles. Nicolas Cage is awesome. Very, very down to earth. Loves lizards, loves snakes. He's great. But Steve Irwin, magic. When we lost Steve, we lost one of the most important voices ever of for animals, for animal welfare, for conservation, for these weird animals that we like. And Steve died in October and I was going to work with Steve. He was going to do this uh, tour over here in the United States. So we were lining up, um, providing a bunch of animals and he was going to start the tour going to Madison Square Garden on New Year's Eve. And we were going to have this giant event. So in Madison Square Garden, I get to be front and center with all my animals, providing all these animals, being a handler with him, kicking off his big American tour. And he dies. And it it wasn't, I was out in Damn. Montana uh, fly fishing for, for trout. And I got, the news of this and it was so heartbreaking not just for me but it's more importantly these animals have lost conservation has lost and and our hobby has lost and it's such a sad thing because he was truly the genuine person that you saw and it, it it's it hurts me today i agree i agree now you touched on a lot of the industry, industry stories that a lot of people probably didn't know about. But we were talking backstage about Jake the Snake. Man, tell them that you, how you used to provide Jake the Snake snakes. Yeah, so Jake the Snake, when he'd come into like, you know, we're close to Boston. So he needs some snakes to pose with. Maybe after he beats somebody up in the ring, he drags out, you know, snakes and leaves them on him. And, of course, you know, you and I, we're just like, oh, God, you know. We're like, this is like, we're not, you know, this is just goofy. So initially, you know, you could bring him animals and, and he was great. But the last time we dealt with him, he created a stink because he didn't want a reticulated python because he thought reticulated pythons were too nasty and aggressive. He wanted like a, a slower moving Burmese python. And his his attitude was... It was less than lovely. And I was like, I don't want to ever deal with this guy again. He's a jerk. <laughs> so that was it. But you know who William Regal is? You know who William Regal is? Yes. Okay. So of course. Oh my God. I've known I've known him forever. So Stephen Regal, William, Darren, whatever you want to call him. I've known him for, for years and years. And, oh, my God, he is wonderful. That he's the kindest, sweetest man. He pretends he could, you know, in, in his day, he was, the, you know, the bad guy, the commissioner and all this different stuff. And he talked smack. And I knew him through all that. But he loves animals like you would not believe. He uh, has um, tegus and a water monitor and you, he calls me up and he's just so wonderful, but wow, he is, that's a guy that is as, you can't even understand how nice and lovely of a man he is. Right, right, right. Shout out to William Regal, man. Um, now we're going to have a little fun real quick and then we get back to the podcast. Shout out to uh, Tara. I don't know how to say her last name, but Byron or something like that. You know exactly what I'm talking about. She's a lovely lady. Right there. Um, She's right here in the back. You know, you, you, this is your lady. You know. shout, shout out to Tara. Now, this is, this is going to make me decide how much I like her. Now, my question to you is, this is your lady. What's the... Uh-oh. He's putting you on the line. It should be more like, what's the best reptile gift I ever got? <laughs> um, she she knows better. She both sides, both sides, both sides. Um, she has one of the snakes that she has that she really is beautiful. She got a um a, a cave dwelling rat snake, a Ridley eye that I had produced, and the snake is just 
stunning, gorgeous. And Tara takes really nice pictures. She really prides herself in getting the nicest pictures, the nicest lighting and all that. And she's very much an artist. You know, she has that artistic eye and she, you know, really does things like that. So I think, is it the red tail rat snake? I mean, not the red tail, I mean the cave dwelling rat snake that you really, she really likes that a lot. Um, she's got some beautiful boas, um, but she's really, really, really picky. Um, <laughs> she has like this nice manageable, <laughs> she's really, really picky and like, She's like one of these uh, red tail boa snobs. It has to have, like, she has two two red tail boas, and um, she's just there. She is. Yeah, that was her. She's she's doing some studies right now. When that like some reticulated earring, reticulated python earrings, or like a big, you know, big chain with snorkels on the bottom of it. <laughs> snarfles yes a diamond chain pinned with a snarfle so with her she just she'll come to nerd and she just rifles through everything and it's i think she likes that better because she doesn't actually have to take care of each one of these animals and one day it's bones pythons the next day it's an albino red tail rat another day it's you know uh, a red tail boa and she gets to just kind of play with all these things she loves you know, like millipedes, and uh, she loves water snakes. We like to go uh, looking for water snakes. She's, um, cause we have really, really pretty Northern banded water snakes here. And um, she has a pretty good relationship with this one population of snakes where she'll stand there and they swim over by her. And she goes there, she's very, very dedicated to her, uh, hiking and uh out in the field herping i love that i love that well your lady songs i won't keep you too much longer um now i gotta talk if we all have haters man when it, when it comes to youtube you know people, people you ain't gonna be able to please everybody so nope. my, my question to you is you know video how are you gonna get like get past this because I, i've had that same problem like sometimes i put out a video and it instantly it'll be yellow, which is like limited ass. So they won't even just push the video. So what are like some of your plans of getting past that so you can continue to teach us some of these medical things? Yeah. So Derek, you are so right. There, you know, there there are haters, but there's so many supporters of my medical video content. And you know, I know I, I've done a lot of things. I've kept a lot of animals. I've had to deal with many, many problems. But let's let's be truly honest here. The average reptile keeper doesn't have access to a qualified veterinarian or a veterinarian at all, and a veterinarian that does reptiles or exotics. So often we're keeping all these wonderful animals, and when something goes wrong, and you and I both know things go wrong, they're they're like they, first of all, just recognizing the problem and making a proper assessment and getting to the crux of the matter. Like, what is the problem? Why is this animal uh, suffering, going through something? So I figured I would take my years and understanding and try to show it to people. So we have a reference. Okay, this is the reference. This is what I'm seeing. I'm going to tell you what I think is wrong. Um, and obviously some of the signs are very, very subtle and other ones are very, very obvious. And often when you discover a problem with your animal, if you do not do some kind of supportive therapy immediately or as soon as possible, that long-term is going to be possibly the deciding factor if that animal lives. So there are things you can immediately do to uh, support you know, supportive therapy to get that animal stabilized, get it to a vet if you have a vet. Or more importantly, my videos also educate vets. They educate, you know, reptile techs, you know, vet techs. There are so many vet techs out there that watch my videos. And to me, when when they're talking to me, it's it's wonderful that they're 
like when they're like, oh my God, this is great. You're doing this and this is it. And they're understanding. And then I get vets that support me. And these are truly the people that are not caught up in an, an ego and they're not woke and they're not whatever. Cause you know, there's always somebody for some reason you're offending somebody, but my purpose is I love these animals. I want to help us be better keepers. I want to be a better keeper. I'm always learning, but isn't it nice when you actually can get somebody that has some level of reference and success, success at diagnosing and possibly alleviating or solving these problems. And we have to be realistic. Many, many, many times these animals are going to die because they don't know what's going on. There's no vet to deal with it. Maybe somebody can afford it. And sometimes there are reptile hacks, you know, things that you can do to fix the problem. One great example is uh, eggs. When an animal becomes egg bound and you got this egg and it's twisted up and you, what's going to happen in many cases, if you don't get that egg out of the snake, it can kill the snake. The snake, especially if there's a lot of eggs in there, it can poison the snake. Okay. It's just the animal becomes septic. It can't manage all that organic material and it will die and it will die a very uncomfortable death. And I've showed people. I, something that I've, I've done for a long time. It was just, it, it made sense to me. And where we take a large gauge syringe, we clean the area and we put it through between the ventral scales into the egg. We drain the egg and we're able to get the egg out without rupturing and tearing. And that often will save an animal's life. And also with monitor lizards and whatever. And it may look really horrific to to somebody but people if they understand it it's either my snake's gonna die or maybe i got a chance at helping them that can really change things you know and a lot of times the vet they're gonna perform surgery on the snake you know they're gonna you know intubate the snake they're gonna knock it out they're gonna do all this stuff and they're gonna cut into the body cavity and they're gonna do all this stuff. And I came up with a way which is far less intrusive and you can often fix your animal. And a couple of days later, it goes back to eating, but people just, right. you know, I'm not a vet. I have no medical training. I'm, I'm maybe intelligent enough that I'm able to understand uh, medical jargon uh i can look at maybe a medical book a veterinary practice book um and incorporate those ideas from the masters with my you know whatever my techniques are and i kind of hybridize them but i can come up with often um procedures that actually work really well to to satisfy my problem and um i'm struggling right now with having a vet that is willing to perform any surgeries on any animals. They're just like, I don't want to do it. Cause wow. Yeah. Like look at Bubba. Bubba had that big like granuloma, like this abscess growth on his foot. I tried desperately because it was like, oh my God, there's this big thing. And I don't really know how I'm going to deal with it. It's, you know, he's 140 pounds right now. And you know, he's probably 110, 120 pounds then. And I was like, I don't know how to deal with this. I literally didn't know. And I was, my friend worked up the street at a vet clinic. And I'm like, Eli, just get Dean to do this. And he's like, yeah, I told Dean and Dean put me off. But eventually it turned out Dean didn't want to do it because Dean was like, it's too much. I don't know how to deal with it. Plus, the thing's got, you know, a head like a cantaloupe. It wants to bite you. You're going to have to knock it out. And if he kills it, he's going to be mortified. And then they went to another vet. And the guy's like, I don't want to do it because if it dies. So I'm looking at this big growth. And I'm like, I got to figure out something because it's getting worse. So I'm like, let's film it. And I filmed right. it. And I decided that 
if I could restrict the blood flow to this growth, maybe that would be a way for me to get this growth off because I didn't have any way to go in there and chop it off. First of all, he's awake. And secondly, I don't have maybe a laser right. or, you know, I need to cauterize. I need to tie off blood vessels, blah, blah, blah. So I decided to get one of those things that uh, people do with livestock when they're, <laughs> they're neutering like a goat. You know, did, I don't know if you saw what I did, but I, think, I got that. I watched that video. I've seen yeah, it. So you got that big rubber band and I put like two of them on it. Right. And I was like, I just need something that really, cause I tried tying it off and it really was just so massive, but I did that and God, it worked. The thing fell off. I did some follow-up stuff. Yep. Um, I cauterized it. I cleaned it up. I put him on antibiotics and he is doing so well. But if I didn't do that, I think ultimately he would have, um, developed a massive infection, uh, his foot. And I think, you know, he could have died, but I was literally desperate and I didn't really, I didn't know what to do. And I just had to be logical, but I'm very happy that I did it. And yeah, it's, um, it's rather controversial. Like some of my medical videos and I was, I went to an expo today and I had multiple people come up to me. Oh my God, your medical videos. If you didn't do that, you know, like I didn't understand this. And then you, you pointed it out. I was talking to a woman that has ball pythons and she has some sick ball pythons. She's like, I've been bringing them to a vet. We did cultures. They gave antibiotics. It didn't work and all this different stuff. And I said, well, that's because your vet doesn't fully understand a potential other problem. And the other problem is protozoa amoebas. And you can get a gastrointestinal um, mm. imbalance of protozoa that can overpopulate and overwhelm the gap, the GI tract of that snake. And that causes these little micro ulcerations. When you have those little micro ulcerations, you can get secondary bacterial infections. And then what happens, the whole immune response gets compromised because you have protozoa, you have like anaerobic, bacteria that lives in the GI tract of low oxygen, the animal puffs up, looks like it's maybe it's pregnant and it's very gassy. And she's like, oh my God, how did you know? And I said, well, this and this. And so I was just like, really what you want to do is you want to treat the protozoan infection because the bacteria that was giving, that was compromising the immune system was causing a respiratory infection, most likely. So the bacteria is secondary to the primary infection, which is a protozoan amoeba infection. So what you have to do is you have to treat the amoeba with metronidazole. And she was beside herself. She's like, I've, I've, you know, struggled with this and I spent all this money and nothing good has happened. And she was so happy. And it's only because I understand maybe the animals a little differently and I've experienced all these problems, but if I don't, if I just, right. if I just walk away from it and just because, you know, some people are, you know, hating on me, uh, I'm just, I'm just being weak. So I, I I'm caring about the animals. I love animals. Do you, do you see, do you, do, you, do you see yourself maybe having like Donnie trying to get a hold of YouTube to see if you can kind of get the videos pushed through? No, I, I, I don't because I think with YouTube, I don't know about what you're dealing with. It seems like AI is going over all the videos and, and we're not even talking to a human. We're talking to like... Um, Damn. We're ta we're talking to something that's auto generated by their algorithm, and at at some point, I, I really don't know. I guess I just have to kind of just uh, um, just maybe change how I do it. I did I did a video yesterday. I've been doing. I'm just starting to do my bubblegum videos, and all the bubblegum videos mean I'm just taking out my phone. I go 
I think I'm going to record something. I don't even know what I'm going to say except for like an idea. And I turn it on and I video it. And then I go, okay, maybe cut, you know, a bit of, uh, you know, noise in the beginning, cut it at the end, take it and upload it, throw on a thumbnail. And that's no frills. It's just me talking. And I have a, an audience that really seems to like that. This is, you know, contrary to, you know, our longer form videos that I do with Donnie, but, um, I, I would just, I got so burned out on it. I, we just kind of like shut everything down and I'm kind of just starting to come back to it. And, um, but I did one yesterday on, uh, parasites and I seen it. Yeah. And it's like people, I mean, it, it doesn't like, it's not like a banger. You're not going to, you're not going to get like, it's not going to like take off. Like if we, you know, did, you know, putting a nail gun through a snake's head, you know, FWC, which just people go crazy. But I think what happens is, Derek, long term, those videos keep going because they're references. And I love to give people references. I like to help people be better keepers and be more knowledgeable. And I love to see people that appreciate that. That is my reward. Not even necessarily. The right. It's those core people that write these absolutely wonderful comments and i don't delete comments so even people that hate on us i leave all those comments up we just don't get a lot of them oh shit we lost them no i'm here well i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm i love what you got going on don't i'm not i'm i ain't gonna say this i love the bubblegum videos but you probably don't want to get don't get rid of don i'm not getting rid of don yeah yeah oh okay now, real quick, Rick, I got a, I got one more funny question. But before you do that, I don't know if you've been keeping up with Florida, man. But do you think Florida's going to fall? And I say that because recently, here recently, like I think it was like December or the beginning of the January, I seen they try to put out some legislation saying they don't just want to ban uh, green iguanas. They want to ban all iguanas. I mean, rock tail, spiny tail. They don't care what kind of iguana. I said they want to ban every single iguana. So my question to you is, do you think Florida is going to fall? Yes. Yeah, I do. It's so US Arc, Florida, I'm very close to. So uh, I'm, I, I love US Arc, Florida. They are the best people possible to fight this. And they are being so mistreated. A good example. So with Donnie and myself, we're always like, uh, we do FOIAs. So we're always doing Freedom of Information Acts with FWC. And they play games with us. They will not give us things. That's not how that's supposed to work. You're supposed to, they're, they're you know, a government agency. They're paid for by the tax payers dollars. So that is the property of the public. And they will ignore you. And, and Donnie is so persistent. He'll just needle them and needle them. And even we still fail to get stuff. And then we, we uh, talk to somebody else that's doing it. And all of a sudden we find out that they got video we didn't get or vice versa. So you see that they're playing a lot of favoritism. And this is now happening to U.S. ARC. And pretty much 95% or so, roughly, of FWC are all developers. And we just found out the woman that's in charge of providing um, FOIA, like stuff, she is purposely restricting the stuff that we're all getting, US ARC, um, certainly us. And this is all um, very dirty, but I think they banned obviously green iguanas, but rock iguanas. So all cyclora, all, you know, spiny iguanas, they're just, um, they're going to wear us down. We're, we're weakening um, because there's not an infinite money supply from the hobby. But more importantly, Derek, there are so many keepers down in Florida that cannot be vocal because if they are vocal, 
and they stand with us, they are going to be zeroed in on. Their officers are going to torture them. They're not going to get their permits. And that is so disgusting and it's so dirty. How can you have true democracy and fight something if you're afraid of retaliation? And these people are terrified of retaliation. Look at um, look at Thai parks, Iguana Land. It, it, it's just that guy's been through hell, and there's there's so many people down there that are just being picked on, like they're you know they can't get their permits renewed, all that different stuff. It's it's really sad. I don't even want to even say names because I don't want to bring them any more grief. Right. Right. Flor Florida scares me because when I seen that bill of them banning all iguanas, and it wasn't even just all iguanas, but at the end of the bill said, also, we don't want you to be able to buy a cat or a dog in a pet store. Yep. I said, what? Yep. They, I said, they're going after cats and dogs. I said, if Florida falls, we're screwed. So, Derek, the history, you know, you don't really know much of the history of this. I identified Florida as a huge problem so long ago, before there was ever U.S. Arc Florida. And people like Mike Cole, I'm like, man, we got to, this is going to be a nightmare. This is going to be a nightmare. And I kept on bringing up points. And everything that I came up with has now become real. And I, like I was able to see ahead because as soon as I saw that little crack, I knew, you know, Florida was like the place you want to be. That's like the mecca center of the reptile hobby importation, the, the climate's proper. You can find great stuff out in the wild. But I knew it had problems. And the people are so fragmented and they, they were acting like, oh, it can't happen. It's not going to happen. And I was losing my mind because I'm like, we got to band together. And it didn't happen until it was too late, if at all. But I just want to give huge props to U.S. Arc Florida because without everything that they've achieved, Florida would have already been gone. I mean, totally done. I agree. I agree. I definitely agree. Now, I want to have a little fun. Uh, but before we – before we uh, – have a little fun. Just one moment. Like, let's take 10 seconds of silence for Brian Barchek. Much love to Brian Barchek. There'll never be another. So, real quick, just divide for like 10 seconds for Brian Barchek. Now, yeah. fun because, like I said, if you, if you watch my podcast, I please support you, Sark. They're fighting for us. Now, let's have a little fun, Kevin. I've, I ask this in a lot of my podcasts, and you'd be surprised how many people pick you. But let's say you, Sark, had a charity wrestling match between all the top reptile content creators. We're going to go, and I want you to tell me, who do you think will win? First, we're going to start with, God bless Brian Barczyk, but if he was here, between Brian Barczyk and Jay Brewer, who's winning in a you, Sark, charity wrestling match? Jay. I said the same thing, because he's got... Brian was, Brian's fit, but I feel like Jay got a few more cheeseburgers on, on Brian. He got a little more weight. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm I'm using the same philosophy. Next one. <laughs> God bless Brian Barchek, man. We we love you. We miss you. Now the next one, you and and I and I put this because Dave Kaufman scares me. I feel like he's 15 feet tall, a Viking. But somebody, we're gonna put we're gonna put you versus Dave Kaufman. Who's winning in a in a charity use arc match? Me. Definitely. You know, a lot of people said that because they told me that you did before you even text me that you did Muay Thai. Somebody told me you you knew karate and shit. I said, does he? I've I've done I've done karate, kickboxing, Walloon Kung Fu, Muay Thai, and Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, no. I love that. I love that. It's so, especially if I can. If okay. I can, okay. Now next, next, I can punch. You feel like you get Dave? Dave is big. That's a big dude. Uh, that 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 wouldn't even phase me. I love Dave. Dave's my buddy, but no, it wouldn't be good. <laughs> okay, I, I love, love Dave. All right, 
Next one. Adam Wickens. I love it. Shout out to Dave. Um, next one. Adam Wickens versus Clint. Oh. Adam. Yeah. Adam, I, that's like somebody told me he was a professional bodybuilder. I didn't know that. Uh, no, Adam, Adam is wonderful. Clint is wonderful, but Clint would be like, I will not partake in any of your physical expression because I don't agree. <laughs> Something like that. He's he's just above above it all. You know, he's yeah, no. He's just yeah. Oh God, no, that would be just you can't <laughs> do that. That's not even that's not fair. All right, I'm gonna give you one one last one. Dingo against Tyler. Who's gonna win in a cherry USAR wrestling match? Who's winning? Wow, that's a really, really good one. Holy, holy shit. Well, so Tyler is is probably built more like me. He's like wiry and oh god. So <laughs> the last so, one's gonna be a doozy. I got one more. So let me ask you a question. Is this just wrestling or is there like punches? No punches, just all for fun, a USAR wrestling match. Charity wrestling so, match. No fun. So wrestling, Dingo, grappling. So Dingo has mass. And Dingo would put his head down and come running at Tyler and might just squish Tyler too many times. <laughs> so I'm gonna I guess I I think if it was punching Tyler, but if it's Dingo using mass and all that, I gotta say Dingo. I love it. I love it. I love it. Last one. Now, this is a doozy. Jeremy versus Rob in a charity USARC wrestling match. Wow. Rob. <laughs> you, think Rob you think Rob would get him? Yeah, because um, Rob is built more probably like me. And he's, you know, long, long body, long arms. And he'd be like a spider, you know? And he, he'd wrap it up. And, you know, yeah, long arms and long legs are going to be a nightmare. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it, man. Mr. Kevin, I know you're busy. I know your lady's at home with you. I just want to say, don't go nowhere, but I want to say, you know, this was a much needed talk. I had a lot of stuff I wanted to get off my chest. I feel like we definitely mended some bridges. Um, and it was an honor to be able to get you on the podcast to chat with you. Well, if, if you would like, because obviously – there's, there's more things, I, I guess, and it comes down to what your audience wants. If you would like to do this again, and we can, we can talk about some more stuff. Certainly, you know, we were talking about the feed videos, but there used to be a channel called the Reptile Channel. Where our entire purpose on YouTube was live feed videos, and we went after them, and we annihilated them. And they had a huge, huge audience, right. but we won't, we won't waste time on that. But that was something that I wholeheartedly could not stand because I thought it cast the reptile hobby in a terrible light. And that, that channel was pretty much based on a boar fetish of animals being eaten alive. And it was really, really tough, but uh, I would like to do this again. If, if, if your audience asked for it, you know, I guess if you get more than like 15 or 20 listens <laughs> in the first week, maybe we actually have enough content that uh, amuse people. I love it. I love it. I love it, man. It was, it was, like I said, it was such an honor to chat with you, man. Down the road, I can't wait to get another round, man. But I, it was something that I definitely wanted because I feel like, you know, you know, everybody deserves that second chance. You know what I'm saying? Whether Absol you know, absolutely. If, you're, if you're genuine, if you're honest, if you really, you know, talk it out, see if you can work it out and move forward. You know what I mean? I think that's, um, I think that's really important, Derek, because we can, you know, like you're, you know, you're different. I didn't have like animosity towards you, but even people that like, I got some people that I, I hated and maybe I, I, I don't hate and all that kind of stuff. So we're, you know, you can forgive um, as long as there wasn't some, you know, horrific thing, but kind of just seeing what the other person's thinking and you find common ground. That's a really good thing. But, you know, under this one roof of the reptile hobby, even somebody that you, I might regard as my enemy i'll still befriend them and try to pull them together for the benefit of the hobby that's what it's about there's not enough of us and we need right. to all be unified 
And I really wish our hobby wouldn't be so petty and we would stand up for each other. I you love know? it. I, you know, I, I would truly, you know, I'm not, I'm not a people lover, but I'm a lover of these animals and I'm, I'm a lover of the people that keep these animals because there is so much talent and there are so many incredible experts in their field of keeping that they're very important and I want these people to flourish. I love it. I love it. Please don't go anywhere. I'm getting ready to put you backstage. Again, thank you so much. It was an honor and I really had a blast chatting with you. Bye, guys. Don't go anywhere. I want to thank you backstage. Don't go yeah, anywhere. Yeah. I'm here. All right. Let's go. Even more have got Big Reptile Talk. Definitely a chat that needed to be had. Um, this ain't about anybody else. This is about me and how I feel uh, going forward with my channel. It's just all about positivity, man. We're doing podcasts. We're doing reaction videos. We're just having fun, man. That's what it's about. Um, shout out to everybody that watched. I love every single one of y'all. Shout out to the people that will watch. This was an insane episode. Missy said, thank you, Kevin. I'm, I'm with you, Missy. Thank you, Kevin. Um, it's hard to get a hold of him. I've been trying to get a hold of him for a while. It's hard to get a hold of him. But <laughs> shout out to Kevin, man. He is where he is for a reason. You know, shout out to Donnie. Whether you like him, whether you dislike him, he knows what he's doing. He's put Kevin in a place up here. You know what I'm saying? So, again, man, this is Big Reptile Talk where I bring animal keepers. If you're an animal keeper, if you love animals, I want to chat with you. Um, this podcast is brought to you by Large Marge Morris, Heathland Hatchery, and Sloan Reptiles. Three amazing guys. Make sure you check all of them out. Large Marge Morris, Heathland Hatchery, and Sloan Reptiles. Make sure you give them a follow. Check out the Morph Market. Tell them Derek sent you. Until next time, man, this is Big Reptile Talk. I'll see y'all next week. Oh. 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 Oh.